social justice. It's everywhere. See what I mean? I do. And I'd like to know a little bit more about it before I try it. Well, what exactly does it do? It's stimulating the septal area. That's the pleasure center of the brain. Whatever this thing does, it must feel pretty good. No wonder it's so popular. So, what's the language of the SJWs? Calm discussions and book clubs? I feel Hitler in these streets. A mustache traded for a toupee. Nazis renamed the cabinet electroconversion therapy, the new gas chamber shaming the gay out of America, turning rainbows into suicide notes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why do I feel like this is an alien language? White supremacy, misogyny, ignorance, white privilege. Do social justice warriors stop to discuss and debate their ideas? Or is this just about spouting buzzwords? We are not here to be debunked. We are here to be respected. We are here to be nasty. Friends, do you also feel like when you're listening to an SJW, it's a lot like... Right and Jerry and Luke. Right and Jerry and Luke. Right of Luwani. Luwani under two moons. Jiri of Umbaya, Umbaya of Crossroads, Umbaya and Lunga, Umbaya of Crossroads and Lunga, Lunga her sky gray. You smile and nod at first, especially when you're young, and you try to take it all in. Is your erection really more than? Protecting the sacred, messy part of my womanhood. Captain, would you be prepared to consider the creation of a mutual non-aggression pact between our two peoples, possibly leading to a trade agreement and cultural interchange? Does this sound like a reasonable course of action to you? That's not very likely, sir. I don't want to hear that, Commander. I am unafraid to be nasty because I am nasty like Susan, Elizabeth, Eleanor, Amelia, Rosa, Gloria, Condoleezza, Sonia, Malala, Michelle, Hillary. Mr. Data, the Tamarian seems to be stating the proper names of individuals and locations. Yes, but what does it all mean? I am at a loss, sir. In September 1991, the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Darmok, featured a budding 23-year-old Ashley Judd in her first role on screen as Ensign Robin Leffler. Leffler, what's the resonance frequency? 0.34 over standard. I want a resolution of 0.53 at the very least. The attractive Ashley would also have an even larger role later that same season as Leffler in the episode The Game. Wesley, look at that. The cuts are precise. Look at how clean the edges are. Why would one of them do this to him? Then Data would be a threat to that plan. And only with Data out of the way would everyone become addicted. It worked. <sighs> I'm supposed to be on duty in engineering. I've got to go before Commander LaForge suspects something. Don't forget Law 91. Always watch your back. It's your turn. Play the game, Wesley. She starred alongside everyone's favorite mansplainer and male feminist, Will Wheaton. How am I supposed to care about anything that happens in that movie when there's nothing in it for me to jerk off to? Counselor. I sense nothing but good intentions from them, Captain. But do SJWs really have good intentions? Does Ashley Judd? Law well, one. You can only count on yourself. Great advice, so let's take a look at a typical Ashley Judd talk. Let's go. Formal. Darmok and Gillard at Tanagra. SJWA and Ashley at YouTube. Ashley Judd, stupid fucking slut. Right off the gate. SJW's attack, stupid neat Kekistani. Top that, Ashley. If you can't handle the internet, fuck off, whore. 
Quick, this normie is gaining enlightenment. Can we study her? I wish Ashley Judd would die a horrible death. She is the absolute worst. Ashley Judd, you're the reason women shouldn't vote. So far, Ashley, you're making a good case for voting as senpai. Woke, woke, woke. Twisted is such a bad movie, I don't even want to rape it. Well, Twisted is simply lame. She's a cop. She knows the risk. And every victim... There's been another murder. ...is a warning. It turns out I know both the victims. This is not a coincidence. I can take care of myself. Really? Is that why people keep dying around you? <laughs> and I can't speak to being an expert on not rape. That would be Sargon of Akkad. If I had to fuck an older woman, oh my god, I would fuck the shit out of Ashley Judd. That bitch is hot AF. The unforgivable shit I would do to her. Ashley, what are you doing on Wizard Chan? Let's see what happens when I run a search for I want to fuck Ashley Judd. My favorite top search pages. One, Ashley Judd says, Trump's daughter, his favorite sex object. And how you respond to Ashley Judd probably indicates how you feel about the Women's March and Donald Trump. Hmm. Look, I'm still speaking English and getting a series of words I'm trying to decipher. I feel like I'm making progress in this video. Temba, his arms wide. Jalad on the ocean. Jalad at Tanagra. Jalad at Tanagra. Online misogyny is a global gender rights tragedy and it is imperative that it ends. Uh-oh. Cinda! His face black, his eyes red! And women's voices and our allies' voices are constrained in ways that are personally, economically, professionally, and politically damaged. And when we curb abuse, we will expand freedom. Even if this doublespeak of freedom through suppression of what you deem as abuse, Ashley, is possible, how is this different to regular online banter? How do you change this from anons to public figures? Things to think on. I am a Kentucky basketball fan, so on a fine March day last year, I was doing one of the things I do best. I was cheering for my Wildcats. The daffodils were blooming, but the referees were not blowing the whistle when I was telling them to. I tweeted! <laughs> Well, this looks like the ultimate frustrated shout into the wind. Ashley, I have a favorite sports team. We have rivals. If you've never trolled the fan board of an opposing squad, I suggest you try it. You give shit to piss people off. You get shit back. Sometimes you get pissed off. The opposing fans bond against you and others bond with you. This is how life works. Competition of equals, even in shit posting online. Since I joined Twitter in 2011, misogyny and misogynists have amply demonstrated they will dog my every step. My spirituality, my faith, being a hillbilly, I can say that, you can't, all of it is fair game. Ashley, you make it sound like the worst of the layers of hell. So I pulled up comments on your last three Twitter posts. Near all comments comprise of, I hate globalists like this. I hate when rich people tell me what to do. Your sister is a nicer person. Your movies are unwatchable. An awful lot also complained that you described Trump's victory as raping the country. This one guy was musing to I don't know who, that maybe I was the definition of a cunt. I was married to a Scot for 14 years, so I said cunt means many different things in different countries. But I'm pretty sure you epitomize the global standard of a dick. <laughs> No, that's more like it, Ashley. Use sexual offense right back at the shitlords. Maybe you aren't so normie after all. I've tried to rise above it, I've tried to get in the trenches, but mostly I would scroll through these social media platforms with one eye partially closed, trying not to see it. What is seen goes in, it's traumatic. Now that's interesting, Ashley. I've seen some crazy and fucked up shit on the internet, and I think it's made me stronger. I feel like, aside from physical pain, very little could harm my mental fragility, and I thank the internet for that. SJWs trigger me, and once I screamed obscenities because of a couple of news editors, but it didn't ruin my life. Why do we need your talk? And I was always secretly hoping in some part of me that what was being said to me and about me wasn't true. What? 
you're going to have to clarify this because what type of truth is there in people shitposting to get you to respond to them? Because even I, an avowed, self-declared feminist who worships at the altar of Gloria. So trans exclusionary? Internalize the patriarchy. This is really critical. Patriarchy is not boys and men. It is a system in which we all participate, including me. Patriarchy theory, however, is false. As per the definition of patriarchy, it's a system of society or government in which the father or eldest male is head of the family and descent is traced through the male line. Currently, there are no true patriarchies in the Western world, and women are promoted, often with less skills, ahead of men at the behest of feminists. Men certainly do not have control of families, and have not for over 100 years. In fact, in many countries, 50% of kids grew up in single mother households. You can also go to Finally Feminism 101, and their blog writers wrote, Historically, patriarchy operates through the disproportionate, sometimes exclusive, conferring of leadership status, formal titles indicating that status on men, a tradition characterized by casting all women as naturally unsuited to lead men, no matter what talents and expertise they might possess. The reason that this has happened in the past, Ashley, is because throughout history, the people who survived followed a combination of strength and brains. Men almost always have more strength than women. Almost always. It's biology. It, this is not controversial, despite what social constructionists think. Only since the Industrial Revolution has either sex really had time to question government structure. This is why in the early 20th century, life was rife with conflict over what governing style would be best for all people, including the new technologies. This is clearly laid out in history. And on the topic of women fighting for a voice, they always had it. Men died in the millions for men to vote. Very few suffragettes were harmed to get their votes. Is this female privilege? On that particular day, for some reason, that particular tweet after the basketball game triggered something called a cyber mob, this vitriolic, global outpouring of the most heinous hate speech, death threats, rape threats. And don't you know, when I was sitting at home alone in my nightgown, I got a phone call, and it was my beloved former husband, and he said on a voicemail, loved one, what is happening to you is not okay. What? Sorry, what is happening to you? People trolling you on the internet while you're at home resting is not something happening to you. I, I think this is where we are missing the plot here. Darmok and Jalad. And there was something about him taking a stand for me that night that allowed me to take a stand for myself, and I started to write. I started to write about sharing the fact that I'm a survivor of all forms of sexual abuse, including three rapes, and the hate speech I get in response to that. These are just some of the comments posted to news outlets. Okay, Ashley, so you flashed through these, which is a tactic social justice warriors love doing, but I'm going to go through them. Number one, what a snitch. Rats get killed in prison. Now, that's not nice, and it's certainly stupid, but it's certainly not inciting violence, which is normally what is construed as hate speech in countries. Number two, this woman waited until her acting career was non-existent to speak up. Again, this alludes to the motives of your timing. This is a common problem with SJWs, trying to gain fame and social status 
through tragedies, whether real or imagined. Three, it's a pattern for publicity. Hey, these people certainly have a keen knowledge of how social justice warriors operate. Four, I know she personally sexually harassed basketball players at University of Kentucky in the 1990s. They were kids, and she slept with them. Um, so this might be a false accusation of sexual assault, but how is this hate speech? At any rate, number five, if it will make her feel better, I'll watch her shower. Without context, this isn't anything. This isn't mean. This is just kind of creepy. It's not hate speech, though. Number six, sounds like obvious embellishment, complaining about male advances. Again, this is not hate speech. Number seven, known to be batshit crazy. Again, this is not hate speech. This is just mean. Number eight, known professional victim. <laughs> Again, what am I missing here? This isn't even close to being offensive on the internet. These are the most inoffensive, offensive tweet mess. These are the most inoffensive, offensive comment posts I think I've ever seen. I'm simply not seeing hate speech. They seem to communicate through narrative imagery, a reference to the individuals and places which appear in their mytho historical accounts. It's as if I were to say to you, Juliet on her balcony. So I wrote this feminist op ed. It is entitled. Forget your team. It is your online gender violence toward girls and women that can kiss my righteous ass. Holy cringe. But I trust girls and I trust women and I trust our allies. It was published. It went viral. It proves that every single day online misogyny is a phenomenon endured by us all. I read through your long-winded article, Ashley, and I was surprised it's not so much about harassment as it is about body insecurities and how the press which anyone with half a brain has learned to avoid like the plague, treats you. In the summary paragraph, the insanity has to stop because as focused on me as it appears to have been, it is all about girls and women. In fact, it's about boys and men too, who are equally objectified and ridiculed according to heteronormative definitions of masculinity that deny the full and dynamic range of their personhood. Nope. It's about you and your insecurities just as is shines through in your hyper overreaction to incredibly light trolling. Privatize your life and avoid the press and you simply won't have issues. Go to your charity work in India by shaking hands with semi-poor people to make yourself feel good. You can take a lesson from the first TV appearance you made. Come join me on the scary troll internet. That a danger shared might sometimes bring two people together. Dalmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Sexual orientation, gender identity, race, ethnicity, religion, you name it, it amplifies the violence endured by girls and women, and for our younger girls, it is worse. However, studies suggest men, and young men in particular, face the most abuse online. What you propose is that women are inferior mentally. That does not seem like equality, Ashley. It's clearly traumatizing. Our mental health, our emotional well-being are so gravely affected because the threat of violence ex is experienced neurobiologically as violence. The cortisol shoots up, the limbic system gets fired, we lose productivity at work. Well, you weren't working very much. But that aside, this isn't experienced as violence mentally. That is a misnomer. Your mind may or may not fire the same human survival signals the first time or two you experience aggressiveness online, but this quickly goes away. That's how you were able to skim through the mean comments, as you mentioned earlier. And let's talk about work. Our ability to work is constrained. Online searches of women applying for jobs reveal nude pictures of them, false allegations they have STDs, their addresses indicating that they are available for sex, with real examples of people showing up at this house for said sex. What the? Ashley, what in the world are you talking about? Are you seriously saying a common problem for women is men who they sleep with, writing on the internet they have STDs, and you can go pay them to have sex? Now you're floating back into unintelligible alien speak. Bry and Jiri at Lunga. Shaka. When the walls fell, Zina at Anzo, Zina and Bakar, Darmok at Tanagra, Shaka, 
Mirab, his sails unfurled. Darmok. Mirab, Tamok. We started something called the Speech Project. Holy shit, does that sound Orwellian. Curbing abuse, expanding freedom. And that website provides a critical forum because there is no global legal thing to help us figure this out. But we do provide on that website a standardized list of definitions because it's hard to attack a behavior in the right way if we're not all sharing a definition of what that behavior is. This is a good example of SJWs at work, creating a new language to describe their phony oppressions to be forever victims. There's no solution, only plotting ways to shame people to think how they want. So I have all these resources that I'm keenly aware so many people in the world do not. Hasn't helped the idiotic reporting standards yet. Shaka, when the walls fell. Yes, Gold Star. Mainstream media does not care at all about humans. Well done. I actually pay someone to scrub my social media feeds, attempting to spare my brain the daily iterations of the trauma of hate speech. And guess what? I get hate speech for that. Oh, you live in an echo chamber. Well, guess what? Having someone post a photograph of me with my mouth open saying they can't wait to come on my face, I have a right to set that boundary. <sighs> people who are oppressed do not have the ability to hire people to delete mean tweets. Fucking hell, talk about elite. Take all of this hate speech. <laughs> That's hilarious. People mocking you for being a sensitive drama queen is not hate speech. The more you go on and on about how oppressive the world is to you and how demons and hate is everywhere, the more you will be mocked and the funnier it becomes. Why can you not see this? It's crazy. And we disaggregate it. You know, when, yeah. and we give that data porn, when it's about political affiliation, when it's about age, when it's about political affiliation, when it's about age, when it's about all of it. I certainly didn't come here to start a war. We're going to win this fight. How can you win a fight against air? There are a lot of solutions. Number one, we have to start with digital media literacy, and clearly it must have a gendered lens. Oh, fuck me, not more Anita. Two, shall we talk about our friends in tech? The sexism in your workplaces must end. Edge. The global standard for gender equality is the minimum standard, and guess what? Silicon Valley, if L'Oreal in India, in the Philippines, in Brazil, and in Russia can do it, you can too. The problem with tech is that they need to recruit people highly trained in computer sciences, of which women enter less frequently. Part of this is that those who truly excel in computer sciences are usually high in the autism spectrum, and women are far less likely to be autistic than men. Combined with that is that the industry is not seen as glamorous, and women tend to go into jobs that make them appear more glamorous in social circles. The tech industry is slowly changing, but we all know that once it becomes filled with normies, the geeks and nerds will be shunned to something else. They will build that up, and then that will inevitably be invaded by normies just as everything that came before it and everything that will come after. This will continue forever, rinse and repeat. There's no comparison to a cosmetics company. Profiteering off misogyny in video games must end. Apparently Ashley doesn't know how the free market works. No, fuck you Judd, make your own games and good luck selling them. Idiot. I'm so tired of hearing you talk to me at cocktail parties like you did a couple weeks ago in Aspen about how deplorable hashtag Gamergate was when you're still making billions of dollars off games that maim and dump women for sport. Basta. Ah, so you don't understand what Gamergate was and you don't understand gaming. Gotcha. Our friends in law enforcement have much to do because we've seen that online violence is an extension of in-person violence. What? But real-life violence has been quite rapidly decreasing. Specifically, violence has been decreasing almost in opposite to the rise in violent video games since the mid-90s. In our country, more girls and women have been murdered by their intimate partners then died on 9-11 and have died since in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. And it's not 
cool to say that, but it is true. <laughs> well, of course, but those are ridiculous comparisons to make. Do you really want to get into how many men have been violently injured or killed since 9-11? You're not going to like that as a comparison. Law enforcement must be empowered. With up-to-date internet technology, the devices, and an understanding of these platforms, how they work. The police wanted to be helpful when Amanda Hess called about the death threat she was getting on Twitter, but they couldn't really when they said, what's Twitter? Guess what, Ashley? Twitter will be dead soon, and people will have moved on, and you won't even know what platform someone is getting mean messages on. It's impossible to police. The sunk costs in policing mean tweets would be trillions of dollars. Our legislators must write and pass astute legislation that reflects today's technology and our notions of free and hate speech. Ashley, I live in a country with hate speech laws, and no post that you've shown in this talk would be classified as hate speech. Not one. I've got a pretty bold voice. So let's talk about our friends, white men. You have a role to play and a choice to make. You can do something, or you can do nothing. Oh, I'm doing something. Since you SJWs have decided to lie, slander, and shame others into silence, I'm speaking out against the hate. I'm speaking out against the hate you perpetrate, and the censorship you see fit to impose on others. I despise how you claim others as pets. It's disgusting and gross, and I will speak out on it forever. And that is true freedom. We're cool in this room, but when this goes out, everyone will say, oh my God, she's a reverse racist. That quote was said by a white man, Robert Morris, chairperson, Price Waterhouse Cooper. He asked me to include it in my talk. Christ, when you're watching elitists like this, it really is breathtaking to see the intellectual idiocy. And lastly, believe her. Believe her. This is fundamentally a problem of human interaction. And thus, I believe that human interaction is at the core of our healing. Trauma not transformed will be trauma transferred. That's correct, Ashley, but that is precisely what you are doing here. You're transferring your trauma from your past onto others who will experience no such trauma from bad words on the internet. Because you are a mental and emotional weakling, you believe that's a common trait in women, and it simply is not. You cannot base global legal agendas on how weak-spirited you are as a person. I invite you to transform your trauma into shitposting. Meme magic is real. Praise Kek. So I'm going to say awesome stuff about myself. I would like for you to reflect it back to me. It might sound something like this. I am a powerful and strong woman, and you would say, yes, you are. Yes, you are. My mama loves me. Yes, she does. I did a great job with my talk. Yes, you did. I have a right to be here. Yes, you do. I'm really cute. Yes, you are. God does good work. Yes, and I love you. Thank you so much for letting me be of service. The explanation is simple. Your attempt to capture our ship has failed. The tactical analysis is to warp. Their weapon systems are substantial.